Namaskar and good evening. Let me begin by congratulating the Observer Research Foundation for hosting the India Think Tank Forum on the occasion of the 75th anniversary of our independence. I am delighted to address this August gathering on India's forthcoming presidency of the G20. I extend warm greetings to all those who are joining this session. Friends, India will assume the presidency of the G20 from the 1st of December this year from Indonesia and will convene the G20 Leaders' Summit for the first time in the country in 2023. Let me start by reiterating that for a nation deeply committed to democracy and multilateralism, India's G20 presidency would be a watershed moment in our history as it seeks to play an important role by finding pragmatic global solutions for the well-being of all. And in doing so, manifest the true spirit of Vasudeva Kutumbakam or the world is one family. The world has seen several crises in the last couple of years, following on the COVID pandemic, global economic stability, food and energy security, and achievement of the SDG agenda are under stress. Developing nations are most affected by the resultant instability, food and energy insecurity, and climate change. In recent years, India's foreign policy has focused on working for the global common good. Through its G20 leadership, India wishes to extend this principle towards finding sustainable solutions to some of the key global challenges emerging out of the interconnectedness of the world, such as climate change, new and emerging technologies, food and energy security, etc. India's vision for the global development agenda is shaped by the rapid transformation of its economy and society launched by the Prime Minister, particularly green and digital transformations. The after effects of the pandemic are also of importance as it underlined the importance of resilient healthcare and global cooperation. Friends, both the G7 and the UN Security Council are reminders of the world order which prevailed immediately after the Second World War. The G20, on the other hand, brings the G7 together with other major economies as equal partners. It also brings together the P5 with other major countries. This makes the G20 a relevant and influential grouping in the world. Moreover, the regular participation of international organizations and regional organizations such as the African Union, NAPAD and ASEAN as invitees in the G20 process makes it both inclusive and representative. Collectively, G20 nations consisting of the world's major developed and developing economies account for 85% of global GDP, 75% of international trade and two-thirds of the world's population. As a premier forum for international economic cooperation, the G20 reinforces the premise that global prosperity is interdependent and economic opportunities and challenges are interlinked. G20 countries have come together to better prepare for the future. As a founding member of the G20, India has used the platform to raise issues of vital importance and those that impact on the most vulnerable around the world. The G20's initial focus was on financial and socio-economic issues. Since it was raised to the leaders' level, the G20 has evolved to bring every contemporary issue under its fold. At the moment, the grouping has 20 working groups between the Sherpa and finance tracks and 10 engagement groups, which bring together civil societies, think tanks, and other key stakeholders of member countries. Presently, India is part of the G20 Troika, and has been supportive of the current President Indonesia on its focus on recovery of the global economy from the COVID-19 pandemic with priority given to global health architecture, digital transformation and sustainable energy transitions. In the run-up to India's presidency, New Delhi has been actively participating in all G20 meetings hosted by Indonesia. We have shared India's achievements and experiences and express support for an inclusive approach 
with pragmatic and human-centric solutions to global issues. As the G20 president, India will set the agenda for the year, identify the themes and focus areas, conduct discussions and deliver the outcome documents. New Delhi will identify, highlight, develop and strengthen international support for priorities of vital importance in diverse, sec diverse social and economic sectors ranging from energy, agriculture, trade, digital economy, health and environment to employment, tourism, anti-corruption and women's empowerment, including in focus areas that impact the most vulnerable and disadvantaged. The G20 presidency would be an opportunity to showcase India's leadership, among other areas, in climate action and climate commitments. The Prime Minister has pointed out that our dedication to climate commitments is evident from our performance. We have achieved the target of 40% energy capacity from non-fossil sources nine years before time. At the COP26 summit last year, the Prime Minister announced the Panch Amrit of five major areas of climate action commitments by India, including creating a net zero economy by 2070. Access to climate finance and technology would be critical in facilitating the ambitious goals India has set for herself. The Prime Minister has also emphasized the importance of behavioral change for catalyzing climate action and highlighted the collective action by the global community as part of a movement called Life or Lifestyle for Environment. On World Environment Day this year, a global initiative for life campaign was launched. The goal of the campaign is to encourage an eco-friendly lifestyle globally. Our vibrant renewable energy sector has shown that India can create a solid business case for investing in the green transition. The G20 could take the lead in mobilizing international finance and multilateral development systems to publicize and incentivize green investment. India, like most of the developing world, is driven by the passions of its youth. And our young people are a digital generation. Our startup sector, our world-beating digital public goods and our industrial policy, focused on technological innovation and growth, show that we are capable of creating tech models that balance the need for global integration and priorities at a national level. At the G20, this model must be internationalized. Digital India must go global. A new tech order must combine cross-border flows of technology and investment with development and growth aspirations. The world needs new and innovative approaches to tackle today's complex challenges. Digital technologies present us with the tools to deal with some contemporary challenges. India's efforts to track the COVID pandemic spread relied on the success of the Arogya Setu digital platform. India's successful vaccination program, which saw 2 billion vaccines administered across our populace, was underpinned by the COVID digital platform. Under our presidency, we would make efforts with other G20 partners to create mechanisms that strengthen the capacity of developing countries to tackle health crises like the COVID-19 pandemic. But globally, healthcare cooperation was shown to be wanting during the pandemic. We must do better. India's G20 presidency will take forward efforts to create mechanisms that can respond better to future health crises like the pandemic. We need new approaches to intellectual property, innovation and co-development of health technology to ensure a more inclusive response to health crises. We must also focus on the benefits that technological progress and evidence-based policy can provide us when it comes to expanding access to health and nutrition. We would also stress the need to protect and promote the interests of micro, small and medium enterprises, small and marginal farmers, local food culture and traditional knowledge, as well as the use of digital technologies. Our focus also would also include sustainable energy transitions, accelerating progress towards SDGs, supply chain resilience, disaster risk reduction, eliminating plastic waste, fugitive economic offenders, countering terrorism, and robust multilateralism. The G20 needs to work to create post-pandemic resilient societies. Sustainable lifestyles need investment in education, nutrition, and health. We need to work with our partners to promote and mobilize investments 
in these vital sectors for the benefit of all, especially the developing world. As you're probably aware, our G20 Secretariat is already in place to prepare for our presidency. The Secretariat will be responsible for the smooth transition from, previous, from the previous presidency, preparations and conduct of all G20 meetings during the year, consultation and coordination with stakeholders, and finally, handing over to the next presidency in December 2023. The Secretariat will also enable capacity building, including knowledge and expertise, for supporting India's leadership on and contributing to global issues in multilateral forums in the years ahead. As we work towards assuming our own presidency by the end of this year, we reiterate our readiness to work closely with Indonesia and G20 member countries to further our shared priorities in a spirit of continuity and consistency. We are working with line ministries to put together a rich and contemporary agenda, clear priorities and impactful outcomes. As stated earlier, we are preparing to hold up to 190 G20 meetings on a pan-India basis in our effort to organize an impeccable and uniquely Indian G20. We strive to take this mega event closer to the lives of people of the people of India, making it a people's G20. Our approach would be to enhance G20 cooperation and expand support in areas like the promotion of sustainable lifestyles, green and digital transitions, and prioritize actions, action in sectors like nutrition, health, food security, and etc. I would like to conclude by assuring you that we are preparing actively and intensely for our forthcoming G20 presidency. While our work is in progress, I affirm that India will strive to work towards an equitable, inclusive, and sustainable global recovery. I once again thank the ORF, in particular, Mr. Samir Saran, for inviting me to deliver this address. My best wishes to all our participants. Thank you.